10 minutes here, so I'll be very, very quick. I'll give you a quick to, uh, introduction on myself. I used to be the former global chief technology officer of Citibank, and I started uh, several companies last year. One of the com companies is Avigant, and what it is, it's a, it's a headset with HDTV. Uh, so it folds down. The other thing I invented was basically a, a helmet. Both of these products, by the way, uh, the first product I crowdfunded at a million and a half dollars, and the second product I crowdfunded for three and a half million dollars. So it's all free equity. But anyway, I'm going to start on a positive note. I'm going to talk to you about the Internet of Things very, very quickly. And what does that mean? It's just more devices connecting to the same infrastructure that we all have today. Um, and, and how do they connect? They connect with sensors. It's not necessarily email anymore. You know this. It's person to machine, machine to machine, person to person. Uh, the market size here is pretty large because you're going to see the internet coming in all forms. Okay. Um, the last thing that I tell you is that in a world survey that was done by Cisco, 96% of all the companies uh, said that they will use the Internet of Things in some way, shape, or form. Very cool, very interesting. And then um, here are things that are, that, you know, Cisco says you want to do it for innovation, asset control, la, la, la. It's really not the interesting part. The interesting part of all of this, by the way, is when the refrigerators go bad. Because remember, every piece that's connected to the internet is a door to the internet. It's a door to you. I don't care if it's a Fitbit, I don't care if it's a refrigerator, and I'm going to show you now why I call this the beginnings of the internet. It's the beginnings of the internet because our internet today is extremely fragile. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to demonstrate to you live how I can proceed to, let's say, bring down an entire company like Sony. I will proceed to demonstrate to you how I can buy a fake British passport or a Swedish passport or whatever. I will demonstrate to you a few other things. First, the very basics. Okay. Um, mm -mm. Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. So we're going to kill this one, and then I'm going to show you basically, you know, a, the regular internet, right? So I go to CNN.com, and it goes to CNN. Okay, interesting enough, very boring. Now I'm going to show to you where I'm coming from. I am coming in from the UK via Seattle. Okay. Uh, and I can change that to Sweden. I think I should be Swedish today. Um, and then as I can go to that, as you can see, my Google now changes to Swedish. So as far as everybody's concerned outside the world, this computer is, is a Swedish machine. Okay? Uh, the interesting thing about that is I want to prove that to you. Here is my address lookup, and as you can see, I am in Sweden. Everything here is, I am in Sweden. Now, let me go show you a couple of things. Um, oh, I run five operating systems in my computer. Regular Windows, Ubuntu, which is regular Unix. Uh, a version of GNU, which is a pure attack system, meaning it's an offensive operating system. And what I'm going to show to you is a operating system called Liberté. And Liberté is very interesting because what it is, is a, it's an operating system that protects itself. When I shut it down, it has no memory, it has no drive, it has nothing. When I shut this computer down, this particular version of the computer down, there is no way that you can forensically find it. But now, let me show you the things that I, I can do once I'm in Liberté. Liberté has its own operating system. Okay, this is its own operating system, its own browser system, its own everything. So let's just go very quickly what I can do. Uh, and I'm not, I'm just gonna go and show you in the category of security, I can do anything from Bitcoin, 
um, you know, telephone sur surveillance systems. I can, I have, by the way, we have our own notion of a wiki in the dark internet where I can find pretty much everything, as you can see. Um, I can, if I don't like somebody or I don't like a particular company, could rent a hacker. Um, and the hacker, as you can see, he says, what I will do, I will do anything for money. I am not a blank, blank, blank. If you want to destroy a business or a person, I'll do it. Simple examples, causing technical trouble on websites, getting private information from anyone, ruining your opponents, and if you want somebody to be ca caught with child porn, I'll give him child porn. And how much does he charge for it? 200 euros, uh, or 500 euros. This guy is actually pretty good. I want to go and I just need like a few passports. So what I do is I can go now buy a few passports. Let's say Japan, Germany, Finland, Belgium. All of this is roughly about 2,000 euros uh, each. Um, then I'm going to show you more of the hidden week, uh, what the hidden internet. Things here that I can do that are very interesting is like I can buy credit cards, obviously not mine which I can use. All the credit card theft that happens in the United States goes to this market. And people go here and buy credit cards from anywhere from 35 cents to $1.50 depending on the card and depending on the limit of the card. You can buy PayPal accounts, you can buy Bitcoin, um, and you can also buy firearms and drugs, a lot of things. Now, why do I point this all out? The internet is fragile because it was a house of bricks that we kept on building one at a time. All of these threats happen because there are bad people in the world. I'm going to try to make this work. Um, why I say that this is the birth of the new internet is all of these problems are out in front of us. This is manifested in, not in only in terms of smuggling, drugs, etc., but terrorism. Our governments, particularly last, last week, they were talking, uh, Prime Minister Cameron and President Obama were saying like, we need a system where we can track the bad guys, at the same time protect all of your privacy. That system does not exist yet. That system is an opportunity for enormous hypergrowth. That system is an opportunity for the birthing of a new internet where we all protect ourselves as God-fearing citizens, and at the same time, take, taking the bad people out of the internet. I did that in eight minutes, I cannot believe. So, I will reserve a minute and 47 seconds for, for questions, and so, there you go, live. No questions? What a what a quiet crowd. No questions. Mm. How do you make money out of the dark web? Uh, when people do it, uh, they basically sell contraband. No, how can these people make money out of the dark web? Uh, I don't think that I'm in a position to explain to people how they make money. It's, it's a complicated thing, but you can. This would not be the tutorial for how to make money out of the dark internet. So why are you here? Because I was invited here. Okay. <laughs> when is uh, Avigen coming out and why is it better than Oculus? Oh, that's a great question. Um, the Avigen Glyph is coming out in fall. We're late, by, uh, we're late by a few months. The reason why it's better than Oculus is it's not a shoebox over your head. Those of you who've seen an Oculus has a shoebox over your head. This is basically this go down, and it's done. We have HD video on the, on the strap, and on the audio side, it's, uh, it's high fidelity audio. Anyway, this is a nice quiet crowd. 15 seconds to go, I am right on time. Good, thank you.